So you've come to the end of your postgraduate training, or maybe you've stayed in academia a bit longer and done a couple of postdocs, or maybe even landed yourself a faculty position. But you've reached a point where you're getting tired of that hustle of temporary contracts, or trying to find money all the time, or maybe even just tired of the limited career options that academia can offer. Perhaps you've heard of other scientists who've taken non-academic positions and are making a real success of it. Whatever the reasons, your attentions may start to think, what else could I do? What else is out there for me? Well, the good news is that the answer to that question is that within reason, pretty much anything you want. But at the same token, that can be pretty daunting if you don't even know where to start. Well, a good place to start is with those career paths that are well-trodden. What have scientists who've left academia actually gone on to do? That's what we're going to be talking about today. Hi, I'm Vicky Sherwood author of the Biomed Ballast blog and host of the YouTube channel where we discuss all things career related for STEM professionals working in academia and beyond. Before we get started with today's topic, I've just got a very quick interlude. My son is desperate to appear on YouTube, so just bear with me, I'm going to indulge him on this. Hi guys, my name's Leah. Welcome to my mummy's new YouTube channel. Leave a like down below on the video and and hit the subscribe button and hit the bell to do all the notifications. Bye guys. Right, where were we? Non-academic careers. So I've put together a list of 40 of the most common industry careers that scientists go on to do, which don't require additional academic training that you need to pay for. You can grab a free copy of this list at the Biomed Badass blog. I'll also put the link in the description below. But in this video, I'm just gonna provide a quick overview of what these 40 career options are and also explain how to use the guide optimally. So let's get started. So once you've signed up for the Biomed Badass subscription, you'll receive a 43 page PDF to download. This will contain 40 industry career options for STEM professionals. And for each of the 40 industry careers, you'll receive a career card containing the following. On the left hand side, there'll be a short list of what I like to call career snapshots for each job type. Things like whether it's a customer facing role or if it's data heavy or writing heavy, for example, or even if it requires a fair amount of travel. And this will allow you to filter quickly through the 40 careers to see if there's a certain criteria that interests you or maybe puts you off from a particular career. The bulk of each career card is actually consistent of these six boxes. The first box provides a short description of the job in its most broadest terms. The aims of these cards is really to give you an idea if a particular career type piques your interest or is worth explaining further. It's not going to really provide you with that in-depth information. It's a tantalizer, if you like, to help you identify things that might interest you and will allow you to focus your post-academic career research on jobs that stand out to you when you're reading through these career cards. I've then listed a few general kind of data day duties for each job that I've gathered from informational interviews and extensively reading different job descriptions for each career. And then perhaps one of the most important boxes on each card is this one called transferable skills. And this is because if you're potentially interested in a career, it lists those skills that may be helpful for you to highlight and provide evidence for in any future job application. So I've grouped the skills into different categories. First is technical skills, which are associated with your scientific training, which would include things like your subject matter expertise, experimental techniques, technology that you use, that type of thing. And those will be highlighted in purple. I've then highlighted informational management skills in red. And these include things like big data handling, programming, analytics, that would be listed in those informational management skills. Project management skills will then be highlighted in blue. Communication skills, including written and verbal, will be highlighted in green. People management skills, including things like coaching, mentoring, and collaboration will be highlighted in yellow. And Finally, I've listed commercial acumen skills, which represents a set of skills that are often hard to come by through your academic experience. But it's important to understand where your knowledge gaps might be for any given role. You don't want to be blindsided in an interview. So if you know you've got that knowledge gap, you can be upfront about it. You can try and mitigate it in some way or maybe do some research. So those commercial acumen skills will be highlighted in white. And it's just important for you to understand when you're transitioning into a role, which sorts of skills you might need, even if you haven't managed to gather them through your academic training. Then I've listed the types of employers for each role and also several common career paths 
taken by professionals who've worked in these roles. So thinking ahead a little bit of possible future career opportunities as well. As with most of the information contained within these cards, these options of, of future career possibilities are not exhaustive. It's just a generalization what it might be able to offer you in the future. And finally, I've also provided a link for each of the career cards to a site where you can read a little bit more about that particular career option if it piques your interest. This is the index of these 40 career options that you'll receive in the PDF when you download it. Remember, you can subscribe to receive this at the Biomed Badass blog and the link is in the description below. What you'll notice straight away that these roles are varied. Um, some of them comprise of the research and teaching skills that you will have generated during your academic experience. Obvious things like R&D scientists, for example, but also, say, uh, manufacturing scientist or process scientist, as these also contain some research element as part of their functional day-to-day -day roles. But also other lab bench roles, such as quality control scientist and lab manager, which, which don't really contain much research, but are very much embedded in the lab bench. And then there's other roles that might require strong teaching skills, things such as application scientist or science teacher or tutor. There are jobs that require a large degree of project management skills, the most obvious being professional project manager in industry, but would also include jobs like account manager or even management consultant. This last one is a very popular choice for transitioning scientists who can leverage on their technical skills and consult for technology-based industries such as high-tech and pharma. If you've got strong programming skills or coding, you can also work in jobs that involve big data, such as data scientist, which is another popular choice for STEM folks, uh, and data engineer as well, but also software developer, for example. There's also a couple of careers for scientists around new technology investment and protection. So obvious one here would be patent agent, but also venture capital analyst. And then there's opportunities around biopharmaceutical affairs, specifically medical affairs and regulatory affairs. And these include examples such as medical science liaison, as a medical affairs role and regulatory affairs officer in regulatory affairs and pharma. Scientific writing also offers a wide range of career opportunities for STEM folks too. For example, these careers might include scientific journal editor and a technical author as two popular examples. And if you're interested more in the commercial side of business, there's also opportunities for scientists there too, such as in technical sales or digital marketing as well. And finally, entrepreneurship and self-employment are important considerations for scientists too. Perhaps you might want to start your own business or work as a freelancer, for example. There's lots of opportunities that are listed here, which jobs you know you can freelance in. So as you can see, there are extensive opportunities and I haven't mentioned all the possible career paths listed here because you can go away and download the PDF and read through it at your leisure. I also didn't want to be making a feature length movie about this handout, so I won't have time to talk through all the career cards but what I will do is show you one card as an example of what they might look like. What I'm going to do is talk specifically through medical writing as a career card and the reason I've picked medical writer is that it's actually my own post academic career of choice so I can speak to it with direct experience. So medical writing is actually one of the more tricky cards to talk through, despite me working as a medical writer for a number of years. And that's because it's a job title that's used to describe a number of different career paths within the pharma industry. I recently wrote about this on my blog, um, detailing the six most common types of medical writing. And I'll leave a link in the description below about those six common types of medical writing roles in case you're interested in learning more. But that said, there are similarities between all the types of work that medical writers do in terms of the day-to-day -day role and the skills that they use. So it makes sense to kind of put these careers in this kind of bucket together. So let's quickly have a look at this and, and how you can navigate this career card as an example. So as you may expect, uh, a medical writing role would be writing heavy, but it's also a client and customer facing role. And many medical writers choose to freelance at some stage in their career, given that this is a career option with lots of flexibility to scientists who choose to work in it. In the job description, I briefly explained that there are different types of writing that you can do in the, in the pharma industry. And then I talk about 
the typical day that comprises of kind of the writing, reviewing and project management surrounding the preparation of the deliverables a medical writer would be producing. But I also give a nod to the compliance that you'd need to be taking into account when writing in the pharma industry and also the client management and therapeutic area training that you'll need to be on top of as a medical writer. Medical writers use a ton of technical communication and project management skills, which I've listed here. But you'll also need a little bit of commercial acumen as a medical writer, mostly in understanding those compliance rules about how to interact and communicate with certain stakeholders in the pharma industry, and also soft skills input in client management as well. In terms of the employers, the three largest employers of medical writers are communications agencies. These provide bespoke third-party consultation to the pharma industry around their communications, the biopharma companies themselves, and this also includes medical device companies, and contract research organisations as well, or CROWs, who provide third-party support with clinical research activities. A typical career path of a medical writer will go from a junior writer through to being a senior writer and eventually maybe senior management. And depending on the type of medical writing you might have been doing, you can then go into things like medical or regulatory affairs. That's also a common option for many writers. And as I mentioned, medical writers, many of them eventually at some point in their career choose to freelance because it provides them more flexibility and it's often very lucrative as well. And finally, if you want to know more about this career, do sign up to my blog because I talk about medical writing a lot. But for all the other careers in the PDF, I've linked you through to an industry relevant site for each of those as well. So I hope that's given you a flavour of what to expect for each of the other 39 career cards. As I said, you can go away and grab a copy of this at www.biomedbadass.com forward slash subscribe if you're currently considering a career in industry and you feel that this guide will help you. So in summary, I've created a short guide to 40 career options for scientists in industry positions, which is freely available at the Biomed About Us blog just follow the subscription link. Each job type comprises of career cards summarising some details about what the job entails, the types of skills you need to do it, and a brief mention of the types of employers and future career opportunities for those professions. There's also a link on each card should you wish to read a bit more about it if you're interested. The types of job listed are far-reaching. They include lab bench roles, through to office-based roles, and even field-based positions as well. So there's plenty of options as a scientist in industry. So best of luck with your career search. Hope this acts as a primer to get you started if you're thinking about moving into industry and thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.